So this guy is a football player, I'm told. Uh, I'm not a sports guy. And he's been making a lot of headlines by refusing to stand during the national anthem. In interviews, he said the protest is to take a stand against police brutality. Is he right? Is he wrong? We're not getting into that. But a few days into that controversy, an article started getting passed around on Facebook that sparked a separate controversy over whether the Star Spangled Banner is racist. The article, written by Josh Schwartz for TheIntercept.com, points specifically to this line. No refuge could save the hireling and slave from the terror of flight or the gloom of the grave. Now, if you're saying to yourself, I've heard the national anthem before and I don't remember there being a bit about slaves, that's because what we think of as the national anthem is actually only the first verse of the national anthem. The national anthem is actually four verses long based on a poem written by Francis Scott Key called The Star Spangled Banner. The rest of the poem is largely about the American flag flying over a fort after a battle and using that image as a symbol for the resilience of the United States of America. So why does the poem stop to take a hard left turn and do a quick touchdown dance around the idea of running down and murdering slaves? For some context, we'll have to explain a little bit about what was happening at the time. The poem, The Star Spangled Banner, was written during the War of 1812, or as most history classes build it, The Revolutionary War Part Two. This time, the reasons are murkier. The US said it was started because Britain kept harassing their ships and trying to impose trade restrictions. Britain says it was started because the U.S. wanted to make a land grab for their colonies in what is now Canada. Either way, in July of 1812, the U.S. declared war and Britain was not prepared for this. While they had some troops to defend their colonies in North America, the bulk of their force was spread halfway across the world engaged in a battle with this guy. Since that wasn't going away for a few years, Britain bolstered their North American force by basically teaming up with anyone who had a beef against the U.S. That includes militias from their northern colonies, Native Americans, or even using impressment, which is basically capturing Americans and forcing them to fight for the crown. And British forces quickly realized another group of Americans that might have a pretty good reason to want to defect, slaves. So as British ships raided U.S. towns, they basically put out the word that any slave that made it into British hands would be free men. And they kept their word. Thousands of slaves escaped and were resettled in British territories, and a few hundred even agreed to join the fight against the U.S. By 1814, things were going relatively well for Britain. British forces managed to get all the way to Washington and burn the White House to the ground. But when they made their big push for Baltimore, there was a hiccup. The British fleet attempted to barrage Fort McHenry and the fort held. That bought the people of Baltimore enough time to set up defenses for the British attack. Francis Scott Key bore witness to the battle. He was being held on a British ship, negotiating for the release of American prisoners. Once he was released, he wrote the Star Spangled Banner based on what he'd seen during the battle. The bit about the hirelings and slaves was sort of talking smack about how the people People who teamed up with the enemy got beat down. So there's almost certainly a racist component. Throwing in a jab about how you beat someone down for having the audacity to not want to be owned by you certainly isn't great. Unfortunately, if you put even a shallow amount of research into early American history, you're going to find a lot of people who are racist, because back then most people were crazy racist. Francis Scott Key, the author of the poem, was also a prosecutor who tried to get a guy hanged for having in his possession a pamphlet that said maybe enslaving human beings isn't the best thing in the world. Uh, I'm sure I'm not the first person to tell you this, but the authors of the Constitution were mostly slave owners. I mean, the guy who wrote the Pledge of Allegiance also wrote a little piece about the dangers of mixing with, quote, the inferior races. These guys were alive in the slave-owning United States. That's the culture you're pulling from. So there's your answer. Is the national anthem racist? The poem it was based on does have a racist component to it, because everything back then did. Kind of a down no tan done. Now I'm Jonathan Sobolewski for AL.com.